Do keep trying, Selena. Sooner or later you may get one who looks like you. Hmm. It's become kind of common in, in, in modern television to, to mess around with chronology, to jump ahead of things. I don't remember 10 years uh, in, in any of my fave shows that have done this. And... I certainly don't remember a big casting change or two or three or five or whatever after only five episodes, but that's what we got in the sixth episode of House of the Dragon. Gosh, this one was a doozy. And it was a doozy because not only what happens on screen, but just it was so dense. I'm so glad I'm here to talk about it with Mallory and Joe. Um, why don't we start with the big changes, Joanna? How about that? Great. What did you think of Emma Darcy as Rhaenyra and Olivia Cook as Allison? Olivia Cook fan, definitely. Emma Darcy was a bit more of a question mark for me, but I just loved this introduction, the long walk and talk. Um, oh, unlike, the, birth, the birth sounds were just elite. Mm, squelching, I yeah. think, is what we got. Yeah. <laughs> but I just, I, I love Emma's take on Rhaenyra. I can see Millie Alcock in this performance, but also see what the 10 years have, have uh, done to this woman. And I, I'm thrilled, honestly, by this change. How about you, Mel? Loving the new cast. Had a great time in the first five episodes with our original cast. And I am, uh, I'm quite impressed with Emma and Olivia so far. Delighted by John McMillan as new Lanor. Like, it's just, it's cool to, to see all of the new cast members. The time jump is obviously something we'll chat about a lot today. I think that in some ways it's going to be quite jarring for people. In other ways, it worked a little bit better than I was anticipating. But in terms of the, the performers capturing the essence of the characters at this point in their arc, I thought, I thought that was a, a hit right away. So, Mal, we've known each other for 10 years. Oh my plenty, God. <laughs> plenty is, <laughs> Nine, plenty, I think, but yeah. Plenty has happened in those <sighs> years. Uh, we haven't done anything as interesting as uh, what the characters on this show have done. But one of the things that I was struck by was all of the things that we are to intuit have happened in the intervening years between these two episodes. Because obviously some of the standout scenes from, from uh, Princess and the Queen are those mm -hmm. that involve the Princess and the Queen facing off. Mm -hmm. First with her being forced to... Or, or at least, you know, refusing to just have a, a midwife take the baby to Allison, but she's going to walk herself all the way to the queen's room, show the baby off. Uh, you know, you've got that face off in the small council. Yeah. There's a lot of proxy battles going on. But I think that for, you know, regular Joes and Janes like, like myself, it might be kind of hard to understand like, well, so they're just as mad as each, at each other 10 years later than they were at the end of episode five. Do you think that that is the correct read, that there's just been no thawing, that things have just gotten progressively worse, and that Rhaenyra being with Harwin is, as a like poorly kept secret has just exacerbated the problems between Rhaenyra and Allison? I would go a step further and say not only is, is the read uh, that time has exacerbated and, and entrenched this divide. I would say that was the entire point of the first five episodes to, to help us understand how that, how that came to be such a deeply rooted and deeply felt division that impacted not only Rhaenyra and Alicent, but every single person in their family and orbit. And, you know, we chatted previously about like the idea of starting with the, the Council of 101 AC as a prologue to this series, but those first five episodes were the prologue to the series. And so on the one hand, I would have loved to spend every single minute with those characters in this 10 year gap in between. I would have loved to welcome all of these new children and all of these new dragons to our you screen wanted the, directly. The Richard Linklater's boyhood version of House of the Dragon. <laughs> one of my favorite movies of all time, as you know. So honestly, yes, exactly. I like to grow up alongside the, the characters and watch the characters grow up themselves. But, the thing that we had to understand, the one thing, is how these characters came to feel this way about each other. What history led them there? And so that's why we got those five episodes to understand where Alice and Renira are now. Joe, the time jump. Yeah, or nay. Yeah, I mean, I think if you had just started the show with this episode, yeah, I think Allison especially is someone hard to root for in this episode. And I know that, you know, like book readers have their opinions of Alicent. And so I think to show her in 
you know, as a person who was pushed around by her father and all these other things to make her younger, to make them have a friendship in the first place that they lost. I right. think that was really smart to, to gain our sympathies before things get tougher. And I think also um, to root that misunderstanding between them, that initial rift in Rhaenyra's sex life, and then to make Rhaenyra's sex life such an ongoing important part of what happens here and now. I think that was a clever link because basically when we meet them in the book, it's just sort of like they were okay and then they hated each other and we don't know why. And so right. they had to invent a reason why. And I think this was a smart way to connect it with events we do know about. To hear more from this conversation, follow The Ring Reverse on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. <laughs>